the worst thing ever. D-Day, Doomsday, Dumb Day, Saturday. The day of Frank Eats Paste Pearl's birthday party. I'd rather eat 10 jars of paste myself than go to that party, Judy thought. For three whole weeks, she had kept the hand delivered by Frank Pearl birthday invitation hidden inside the bottom of her tip it game where mom and dad, who hated tip it, would never find it. Then today, the day, very day of the party, it happened. Dad found it. She, Judy Moody, had just had to ask dad to take her to Fur and Fangs for some toad food. She just happened to be looking at a tadpole kit with real live frog eggs. Watch tadpoles turn into frogs, see tails shrink, feet grow, legs farm. form. Hoping to ask dad into buying it for her when another kit just like it bumped into her. Holding the kit was Frank's mom. Judy, Frank's mom said, isn't that funny? It looks like we had the same idea for Frank's present. I thought he'd love watching a tadpole turn into a frog. I was going to buy it, buy him the same kit. Um, I wasn't, I mean, you were? Frank's really looking forward to seeing you at his party. Party? Dad's ears perked up. Whose party? Frank's, said his mom. I'm Mrs. Pearl, Frank's mom. Nice to meet you, said Dad. Very nice to meet you, said Mrs. Pearl. And Judy, we'll see you this afternoon. Bye for now. Miss Pearl put the tadpole kit she was holding back on the shelf. Frank loves reptiles, she said. Amphibians, thought Judy. Judy, why didn't you say you needed to come here to get your friend a birthday present? Did I know you had a party to go to today, Dad asked? No. In the car, Judy tried to convince her dad that there would be kids at the party making rude body noises and calling each other animal breath names. You'll have fun. You know, Frank, Pearl eats paste, said Judy. Look, you've already got the tadpole kit, Dad said. I was kind of ho sort of hoping I could keep it. But Mrs. Pearl put hers back when she saw yours. At least take it over, Judy. Do I have to wrap it, asked Judy. From the look on his face, she knew the answer. Judy Moody wrapped the too good for a paste eater present in boring newspaper, not the comics even though the party started at two o'clock. She told mom and dad that the party didn't start until four o'clock, so she would only have to go to the last disgust, disgusting minutes. The whole family rode in the car to Frank Pearl's house. Even Toadie went along, carried by stink in a yogurt container. Judy held Frank's lumpy present and fell into a bad mood, back seat slump. Why did Rocky have to go to his grandma's today of all days? She's crying, Stink reported to the front seat. Am not, she said, in back with her best troll eyes ever. Wait here, Judy told her family when they got to Frank's house. Go ahead, have fun, Dad said. We'll be back for you in a half an hour, 40 minutes tops. We're only going to the supermarket, said Mom but they might as well have been going to New Zealand. She doesn't want her parents to go, does she? How do you think the party will be? Do you think she'll end up enjoying herself? Let's find out. Miss Pearl answered the door. Judy, we thought you'd change your mind. Come out back, coming out back. Frank, Judy's here, honey. Mrs. Pearl called out to the backyard. Judy looked around the yard. All she could see were boys, boys hurling icing insects at each other, and boys mixing chocolate cake with ketchup, and boys conducting an experiment with Kool-Aid and a grasshopper. Where are the other kids, asked Judy. Everybody's here, honey. Frank's little sister Maggie went off to a friend's. I think you know all the boys from school, and there's Adrian and Sandy from next door. Sandy was a boy, so was Adrian. So they're all boys except for Judy. Frank Pearl had tricked her. The girls next door were boys. She, Judy Moody, was definitely the one and only girl. 
alone at Frank Pearl's all-boy except her birthday party. Judy wanted to climb right up Frank Pearl's tire swing rope and howl like a rainforest monkey. Instead, she asked, do you have a bathroom? Judy decided to stay in the Pearl's bathroom forever, or at least until her parents came back from New Zealand. Frank Pearl's all-boy party had to be the worst thing that had ever happened to her. Judy looked for something to do. Uncapping an eyebrow pencil, she drew some sharp new teeth on her faded first day of school shark t-shirt. Rare. Knock, knock. Judy, are you there? Judy turned in the water in a hurry so Miss Pearl would think she was washing her hands. Just a minute, she called. Water sprayed all over her, soaking her shirt. The sharp new shark teeth blurred and ran. Judy opened the door. Mrs. Pearl said, Frank was about to open your present, but we couldn't find you. Back outside, Brad pointed at Judy's wet shirt. You guys, it's a shark with black blood dripping from its mouth. Wow, cool. How'd you do that? Talent, said Judy, and water. Water fight, Brad took a glass of water and threw it on Adam. Mitchell threw one on Dylan. Frank poured one right over his head and grinned. Miss Pearl whistled, which put a stop to the water battle. Dylan, Brad, your parents are here. Don't forget your party favors. Mrs. Pearl gave a baby slinky to each kid as he went out the door. By the time she got to Judy, there was no more baby slinkies left. I must have counted wrong, said Mrs. Pearl. Or Brad took two, said Frank. Here, Judy, I was going to buy these for party favors, but I couldn't find enough. Mrs. Pearl handed her a miniature rock and gem collection in a plastic see-through box. Tiny amethyst and jade stones, even a crackly amber one. Thank you, Mrs. Pearl, Judy said, and she meant it. I love collecting stones and things. Once my brother thought he found a real moon rock. Frank's a collector too, said Mrs. Pearl. All the boys are gone, Frank. Why don't you take Judy up to your room and show her while she waits for her parents? Come on, last, one's, last one up's a rotten egg, said Frank. He probably collects paste jars, Judy thought. He probably eats it for a midnight snack. Frank Pearl's shelves were lined with coffee cans and baby food jars. Each was filled with marbles, rubber bugs, erasers, something. Judy couldn't help asking, do you have any baseball erasers? I have 10, said Frank. I got them free when a real oral came to the library. Really, me too, Judy smiled. She almost said, same, same. Then she caught herself, just in time. I'm taping one to my me collage beside my favorite bug. A click beetle for hobbies, you know, collecting things. That's my hobby too, said Judy. He also had two pencil sharpeners, a Liberty Bell and a brain, and a tiny, teeny tiny flip book from Victor's. Frank Pearl showed her his buffalo nickel, which he kept in a double-locked piggy bank. It's not really a collection yet, because there's only one. That's okay, said Judy. Frank also had a killer comic book collection with really old ones like the Green Hornet, Richie Rich, and Captain Marvel. To top it off, he even had a miniature soap collection and fancy hotel names on the wrappers. Judy forgot all about wanting to leave. Why is she forgetting about leaving? Because she's actually having fun. What's that, she asked. A pitcher plant. It catches insects. They think it's a flower, so they land on it. Then they fall down the tube and the plant eats them. Rare, said Judy. I have a Venus flytrap named Jaws. I know, said Frank. That was funny when you brought it to school, how it ate the hamburger and stunk up your backpack and everything. Frank, Judy. The Moody's are here. I guess I gotta go for it, Judy told Frank. Well, thanks for the tadpole pole kit, Frank said, twisting a leg of the rubber click beetle from his collection. Hey, do you really eat paste, I asked Judy, or asked Judy. 
I tasted it one time for a dare. Rare, Judy said. I think she actually enjoyed herself at that party, and I think she became Frank's friend, too. All right, see you next time.